Hi everybody. I've recently become interested in learning how circuit networks work in Factorio. This is an example of a text display that I created. I started out by watching several other videos and I don't know if it was because they were made with earlier versions of Factorio, but I just could not get them to work. I looked at them and thought I could understand mostly how they worked, but there were wires that weren't connected and it was just, I didn't want to fiddle with it. So I made my own. And here it is appropriately displaying hello world. So how does this work? Well, let's, let's start by walking over here to the first character and um, taking a look at it. So let's start by how we're turning on and off the individual lights. If we look at this light, we'll see that it's controlled by a signal. And this is signal zero, and signals are basically 32-bit numbers. And we're at, checking to see if this one is less than, not signal zero, but the number zero, which means it's negative. So if it's negative, the light's on, and if it's positive, the light's off. This one, as I said, is controlled by signal zero, this one's controlled by signal one, signal two, signal three, and so on. Once we run out of numbers, we start using the alphabet A, B, C, all the way up through signal Y. So we can turn on individual lights and we'll explain more how we figure out which ones we're gonna be turning off and on using those signals. So the next thing you need to be able to do is how do you know which lights to turn on for an H, for an example? Well, for that, you need a character set. And I created a Google spreadsheet to help me with that. So over here, I have a little area where you can kind of get a visual representation of what each character looks like. I'm using ASCII character values for the different characters in the character set. So 32 in decimal is a space, which there's nothing on, obviously. Uh, we have an exclamation point, double quotes. Now, the way we're encoding these is each one of these is one of those lights that we were looking at earlier. We have five across and we have seven down. So this would be signal zero, signal one, signal two, and then it was, I think, signal eight, nine, A, and so on. So for each one of those lights, if the light is on, we want to set that bits value, and if it's off, obviously, we want it to be clear. Over in this column, I have the value for each bit, starting with bit 31, which would be the most significant bit, then bit 30, bit 29, and so on. If one of the lights is on, we record the value for that bit, and if it's not, we get a zero. As we progress down the table, we're combining the previous cell's value with the next cell's value, so by the time we get through all 32 bits, this last cell has all 32 bits combined into it of whether a light is on or off for that particular light. Then we start over again with the second bank. And as before, we begin accumulating the bit values again for the second bank where we have our uppercase and other characters and then eventually that one is done and we start over again with the third bank where we have our lowercase characters. So having our character set, if we return back to Factorio, having our character set, we can now figure out how to turn on the different lights for a character H. And the way we do that is with these combinators. And unfortunately, 
the combinator can only hold 18 signals. So the first combinator here in the first bank holds 0 through H, and then the second one for the first bank goes I through Y. Then we start over in the second bank again with 0 through H, and then same thing here, and then we have our third bank, just like we did in the spreadsheet. So as we said before, each signal is just a 32-bit number, and um, one of the things I did to make this data entry a little easier in the spreadsheet is I created this segment map. And it basically just copies the combined values over here into something and also the legend for which signal this value belongs to. I made the data entry pretty easy. I only made a few mistakes, but by double checking my work as I went, uh, it actually went pretty well. This also takes care of um, the making negative numbers, which is uh, using two's complement notation. If you want to learn more about that, Google will tell you everything you need to know. So using this table, unfortunately, there is no copy and paste, at least uh, from Windows into Factorio. So yes, I had to type manually every single one of these values uh, into the signal. It was a little tedious, but uh, yeah, I did it. All right, so um, maybe the thing that makes the most sense to look at next is uh, how I got the different characters for each uh, character. And I, I'm using a combinator here uh, for like a constant message. And the way I did that is I'm setting each character in a signal with, and these are separate signals. This is using a green network and these are using red network. So we won't have any conflict. But the first, the ASCII value of the first character is stored in signal zero, which in this case for capital H is a 72. And then the next character is stored in signal one and a lowercase e is a 101, a lowercase l is a 108, and so on. Now, the way we're picking which one of these, and I just felt it was kind of convenient to do this all in one location here, and then use this arithmetic combinator here to choose which one of those signals we supply to each character. So in this case, this one is just passing signal zero on to output Z. Output Z is later used in here as the uh, character to display. And if we look at the next character over, we'll see that it's looking at signal one. And if you add zero to that, it's still signal one and you put it out on signal Z. So this one gets whatever's in signal zero, this one gets whatever's in signal one. So now we're able to select which character is in here. Um, if you'll remember, we have three banks of these and we have to figure out which one of these three banks our character is in. Fortunately, it's really easy if you take advantage of the integer divide combinator. And this one is just taking our number, remember we said Z is going to be whatever character we're going to display, and it's dividing it by 32. So as I said earlier, we start here with 32 to 63, and if you do inter integer division, 32 divided by 32 is 1, and all the way up through 63, you're going to get a value of 1, which would be a really convenient way to select this first bank. And then if we start at 64, 64 divided by 32 is 2, and that continues all the way up to 95 or whatever it is. And then likewise, this one, we would be getting a 3 as the result, which will help us select this. Now I'm using the dot signal because I'm starting to run out of signals. There's only so many you have available, but that dot signal is being supplied over here to these selectors. Now each one of the banks of combinators is connected to this 
the cider combinator and this one is looking for a dot signal of one and if that's true then whatever these signals are are output on this red network likewise if we have a two on there then only these are output on the red network and then finally for three then these are output this red network then comes in over here and this is where some of the cool magic happens so we used the integer divide to figure out which bank but now we need to figure out which of the 32 characters it is in that bank and once again we have a modulo operator here that will conveniently take our numbers our ascii values and give us a 0 through 31 to indicate which character we want to display in here so once we have that number now as i mentioned earlier we can start using the whether the number is positive or negative to affect the lights so this is a shifter and basically it shifts all of the values to the left however many times the value is so if this is zero it doesn't shift them at all and in that case if the signal zero started out negative then the light's going to be on if signal zero was positive initially then the light would be off but if z equaled one then we're going to shift everything over one bit and the way neg computer numbers work by shifting the bits left into that high order bit bit 31 which determines whether the number is positive or negative we're basically just lining up the character that we want with this shifter. So that's really all of the magic on how this works. Um, I will post the uh, code for the blueprints for each one of these. Uh, I've got one blueprint for the initial one. I I might change that so it just has the combinators and the power pole and then um, this would be the same for every character rather than having a oddball first character but anyway I'll go ahead and post these in there uh, something else you could do is since this combinator is um, just setting these values you could use some automation to control what is going into these different signals so instead of them being static values you could rotate them through here to create a scrolling display um, and later I will be making uh, hexadecimal displays and decimal displays to display numbers so that for example if you've got a four digit uh, a four, four digit decimal display the ones would display here the tens would display here the hundreds and the thousands so uh, you can look for those videos to be coming in the following weeks and uh, i hope i've inspired you to get in and maybe play some factorio and play around with the circuit networks so until next time thanks for watching